Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box for the 21st of November 2012. My name is Total Biscuit, rounding up your daily Steam deals in the Steam Autumn Sale running from the 21st to the 26th of this particular month. Tis an exciting time of year, is it not? Yes, it very much is. This is the time of year where you get to waste a whole bunch of money. This is actually a smaller sale from what we're expecting from the Christmas bonanza that Valve usually throws at us, but nonetheless, I feel that the guide is required. So, a few changes this time around, not a huge number. This isn't their really big sale, so they haven't mucked with the mechanics or introduced any crazy stuff. At the moment, it seems like all of their daily deals are actually double daily deals. So they last for two days each and there will be some overlap. This is quite similar to the way that they did them last time around. Although this time they've just straight up said, look, the offers are going to end in two days. That's good for me because that means I can get these videos out and you've got a good amount of time to figure out whether or not you actually want the title. They also have what appears to be some kind of indie highlights. It's nine games that are all heavily discounted in an indie game section. I don't know if they're going to change this every day, but we're going to cover it today. Maybe they change it, and if they do, then we'll try and keep an eye on that. So, without further ado, before I start, can I please give you one piece of advice that I give to everyone in every Steam sale? Unless you are absolutely desperate to play the game right now, do not buy anything that is not on daily deal until the final day of the sale. The reason being that it is possible for a double discount to occur. There is some stuff that's maybe 25-30% off that very well might end up being discounted further later down the line in a daily deal. So you will be kicking yourself if you purchase the game and then suddenly find out, oh, right, okay, I could have saved twice as much on that one. That said, there are also a bunch of very deep hidden discounts that are unlikely to get any more extreme, 75% off or higher, and I'm going to be gathering information on all of those on the next couple of days, and I'll try and give you a list of all of the hidden stuff that is 75% discounted or higher. All right, let's kick it off, shall we, with XCOM, 33% off. That's $33.49, €33.49, or £20.09. So the guys in the UK getting the best deal on that one. This is a pretty significant discount for a game that only came out a month and a half ago, and... In its current state, it is still pretty buggy. They have not patched out all of the bugs in this game at all, which is pretty embarrassing, considering the game has been out, as I pointed out, for a month and a half. The last major bug fix was a few weeks ago now, actually, on the 8th of November. They did fix some of the roof visibility problems with the larger ships. That was a big problem, and a few of the hangs and crashes have been dealt with, but the game is still pretty dodgy. I played multiplayer with the one and only Angry Joe after this patch had come out, and there were still many problems. We had issues with creatures not being able to move to certain areas of the map. Some guys just got stuck entirely. Camera problems, crashes, yeah, you name it. This thing has a lot of problems still, so that does make me a little bit hesitant in my recommendation. Regardless, it is a game that I've sunk an awful lot of time into. It has also been a game that's given me a great deal of frustration as a result of the bugs, but it is a very compelling experience. It's not as deep as the original games, but it's a lot of fun to play, and if you're going to play it, I would suggest that you play it on Iron Man Classic mode, which is of course the nicely balanced difficulty setting that really gives the game that tension that the XCOM series is so known for. A good price for a good game, but once again, let the buyer beware, this game is not fully fixed as of yet. Magic the Gathering, Jewels of the Planeswalker 2013, that's 50% off, taken down to 5 bucks, 4 euros 49 or 3 pounds 49. This is a really solid interpretation of the rather popular collectible card game. It is an ideal introduction to the franchise. This is what I've always said about the Jewels of the Planeswalker games. They're the full game of Magic, but you are limited to a set of pre-constructed decks. There is also a bunch of DLC available. All of this is 50% off across the board. Most of this you do not need. I just want to point this out. So don't even bother with the deck keys and foil conversions. The expansion pack is the one that you want. That's the Duels of the Planeswalker 2013 expansion. And there is also a 2013 deck pack, which gives you a few additional decks for campaign and multiplayer. Those are good. Those are worth having. Everything else, kind of not. What it does mean is you'll have to unlock the decks as you go by playing the single player campaign. That's fine because the single player campaign's pretty good anyway. 
and it's ideal for those who either want to learn the game or enjoy Magic but don't want to deal with the horrible client for Magic the Gathering Online and of course don't want to buy more cards, which is entirely understandable. It's a very enjoyable game. It's a little slow for my liking. It takes a little bit too long even on the faster speed for the AI to take its turn and things like that. I would just like to get rid of some of, the, some of the animations and have things go down nice and quickly, but that doesn't necessarily happen. One way or the other though, there's an awful lot of really, really good content here and you're not paying an awful lot for it. If you've had any curiosity as regards to collectible card games, Duels of the Planeswalkers is probably the best way to get into them. So by all means, do give it a shot. I can certainly recommend it. The Walking Dead complete season, 50% off, taking it down to $12.49, €12.49 or £10.49. This is a very nice deal for an exceptionally good episodic game. The final chapter is on its way out. It is not done yet, but it's coming out very soon. We're currently up to episode four in this series. It is a point and click game for the most part with some elements like say Heavy Rain or Fahrenheit, whereby it's a little bit QTE, a little bit gesture based. The game does have a very cool choice and consequence system with a dialogue tree and a variety of interesting moral choices that you have to make. It's a dark game, it's an interesting game, it's extremely well presented, it is done so in the style of the graphic novels with a graphic novel aesthetic and even if you aren't a fan of adventure games, The Walking Dead kind of won me over. I play it on my iPad now because it's a wonderful game to play while on the plane or traveling around the place since it's fully featured, but on Steam of course it does does look the best, it plays the best, and for that price it's certainly worthwhile. Some people might say it's not enough of a discount, I would beg to differ on that since the final episode has not come out yet and Walking Dead is a pretty consistent seller. There's a reason at the time of this recording why it's number two in the charts, because it's an incredibly good game and it's probably Telltale's finest work to this particular date, so it is definitely something that you want to consider dipping into without question. Please bear in mind that watching the television series or even reading the graphic novels is actually not required at all. Most of the stuff in that game is an original story, so well worth a look. As always, if you want to check out my WTF ears, well, there's a button over to the side right there, and most of these games I should be able to show you a little bit more about if you are interested before you throw down the money. Deep discounts ahoy, ladies and gentlemen. Darksiders 2, 66% off. This is a sale that actually happened about a week ago as well. Very deep discount on a pretty recent game. That takes it down to the fairly low and intriguing price of $16.99. €16.99 or £11.89. For £11.89, that's absolutely ridiculous. So... I did do a video on this, I did a video on the PC version, and I did criticize it in various areas. They have improved the options menu, but they haven't quite got it to where I'd be happy with it. They were promising the release of a .ini file that would allow for some more configuration. The options menu was absolutely abysmal when they launched this game. The game still doesn't have an FOV option, which some people were complaining about. Usually I don't really expect that to be in a third person game, but the way that the camera was actually placed in this title did not help a lot of people. It was really getting in the way and it was causing some motion sickness for some people, which is unfortunate to say the least. There is a very detailed article on this over at PCGamingWiki.com, which is the place I would recommend you go if you need to know anything about troubleshooting and the technical aspects of various PC ports and titles. For that price, it's probably worthwhile though. I wouldn't have ever recommended buying it at full price in the state that it was in on launch, but for two thirds off, it's very difficult to really argue that it would be a bad idea to purchase. It's definitely a very good idea if you're into the kind of Zelda-ish style of things. It's got a bit more God of War, a little bit more Bayonetta and Devil May Cry in it than the previous game did, but it still remains a game that many describe as the unofficial Dark Zelda, the Zelda that Nintendo would never make. And it does have an interesting loot system in as well, although I'm not entirely convinced that it really served much of a purpose in this particular game. One way or the other though, that is a great price for an amazing game. The port, as I said, is functional at best, and you may wish to check out the article to see if there is anything in particular that might annoy you. Age of Empires 3 complete, 75% off, takes it down to $10, 9 euros 24 and £7.49. Honestly, not a game I've had too much experience with. I have talked about it in the past, and it's been criticized by a number of different people as nowhere near as interesting as the previous games. Unfortunately, we haven't really had all that many games in this genre lately. None at all, in fact. 
As much as I would love an Age of Empires 4, we haven't had one, no Rise of Nations 2, and of course no Empire Earth 4, although that series certainly died with the third game, which was absolutely dreadful. Complaints about this game include that the campaigns were too short and there was a limited number of factions available. That said, the Complete Edition does provide more single-player content as well as more factions to play, so it may very well be a little better for you as a direct result. The community reaction to this game was mixed, to say the least, and if you are an Age of Empires fan, the chances are you've already played it. If you're not, it's a pretty good place to start. Age of Empires 2 is, without question, a better game. Unfortunately, it's not really available anywhere, which sucks. It's not available on GOG, it's not available on Steam. There was, surprisingly enough, still a competitive scene for that game. That's how well it was built, but acquiring a copy of it these days does seem to be a little tricky. Not a bad strategy game, and certainly worthwhile content-wise, considering it does come with the expansion packs as well. If you were big into the previous games, however, you may be disappointed by a lack of depth. Last but by no means least on the daily deals, before we have a look at the indies, is Terraria, which is oddly enough an indie as well. 66% off, $3.39, €3.39, and £2. Yeah, not exactly an expensive game at all. This game's been on sale a billion times already. You already know about Terraria. Chances are you watch my series. If you don't know what it is, it's a Metroidvania-style game with an element of crafting and building within it. So you go around the world, you gather resources, kind of Minecraft style, you fight monsters very much in the two-dimensional Metroidvania style. You go exploring and you complete your items and things like that. It's a lot of fun in multiplayer. And as you've probably seen from my series, yeah, there's quite a lot of content there as well. For that price, if you haven't already gotten it, it's it's definitely worth grabbing, there's no real doubt about that. Alright, let's move on to the indies, shall we? We're gonna try and make this as quick as possible because of course that's nine more games on the list. We'll start off with Sanctum, which is a first-person tower defense game for $2.49, €2.49 and £1.74. Pretty fun, it's got a reasonable amount of free content available as well, including the Yog Cave. Yes, indeed, they really like that game and they got a bit of free DLC in there as well. I had fun with it, it's more fun once you've got the DLC to get the extra weapons and things like that, but it's a pretty decent multiplayer first-person tower defense game. You build towers from a per first-person perspective, but you also shoot stuff with a variety of different weapons. Nice graphics, nicely designed, not so great for single player, I'd recommend playing it with friends. World of Goo, $2.49, €2.24, £1.74. It's a classic, honestly, when it comes to physics-based puzzle platform-ish games, and I call it a platformer specifically because you make platforms with it. It's not really a platformer per se, but it is a physics-based puzzler. It is a classic. It is well-presented. Those guys just released their new game, Little Inferno, which I'm looking forward to trying out in the next couple of days. But if you haven't played World of Goo and you really enjoy puzzle games, then what the hell are you doing wasting your time playing other things? World of Goo is considered a classic of the genre, and rightly so. Waves, 75% off at $2.49, €2.49, and £1.74. This is essentially a score attack shooter in the vein of Geometry Wars. I didn't like it all that much, honestly, and the developer even went to the extreme of saying that I kind of missed the point of it. I personally didn't find it all that enjoyable. Some people really do, and if you're into score attack shooters, it may certainly be worth having a look at at that price. Personally, I don't believe it was worth the initial investment, and it was not a game that I had a huge amount of fun with. But it's nicely designed graphically. It's just a very simple concept that is built for a particular audience, and I am not that audience. Audio Surf, 75% off. That is $2.49, €2.49, and £1.49 as well. Who doesn't own Audio Surf? Man, there was a craze for Audio Surf. This was before all this Happy Wheels nonsense. Everyone used to do Audio Surf videos with all manner of different music. It's all about riding the music, as it were. It's generated based on the music you put into it. It makes a track for you, and there are a variety of different game modes available. It was very, very popular back in the day, and still a fun game if you happen to have a large music collection. I use it as an excuse to listen to music again, and if you need one, well, this is a good game to do that on. Fortune Summoners, 50% off. That takes it down to 10 bucks. That is €7.49 and £6.49. This is one of the games translated by Carpe Fulgor, the folks that brought you Reseteer. And I don't know an awful lot about it, honestly. I really could not tell you a thing about Fortune Summoners at this stage. All I can say is that it is converted from a previous console release, which means you will have to deal with some console-like controls. Recommended to play it with a gamepad, although not required. And it has an incredibly cutesy anime style that may make you wish to vomit. Just FYI. 
Cave Story, that's going to set you back at $2.49, €2.49, or £1.74. This is very much a classic action platformer. That is the design. That was what he was going for with this. It's a weird one because this game actually got a lot of popularity very slowly over time. It got a reputation as being a really well-designed game mechanically, and it is. It's got an awesome soundtrack, and it has a weapon level-up system, which is really kind of neat, as well as a very awesome plot. The Steam version does include the enhancements from the WiiWare release, so that's additional content and different modes. So that's certainly worth having a look at if you are into that sort of thing. It also has the graphical enhancements as well, which is a fairly significant upgrade from its original release. Cube, 75% off, uh, $3.74, €2.74, and £2.99. Cube is a first-person puzzler, it evokes memories of Portal for fairly obvious reasons, and it usually involves manipulating various different coloured blocks within the environment in order to bypass your objectives. I found it competent, but lacking in personality. It was clinical in nature. I'm told that it gets better later on, but personally the game bored me to tears before I even got to that point. So if you're into that kind of genre, it's probably worth having a look at, but aside from that, not so awesome. I, yes, oh wow, I, 75% off, $2.49, €2.49, and £1.24. Yeah, this is a very, very odd game indeed, really weird. It's got a bizarre learning curve and a lot of very odd mechanics. I am, however, told that it is exceptionally fun in co-op. What I tried of it confused the hell out of me. It really, really did. I couldn't get into that game at all, but... Those who have have told me that it's got some really cool Deus Ex style elements, it's like an FPS RPG, and the cyberpunk nature of the world is very enjoyable indeed. It also does have an extensive co-op mode. Let the buyer beware on that one, I feel. If you're looking for something a little bit weird and completely out of the ordinary, then I might be for you, but don't expect it to open the doors and invite you in. That's something you're going to have to work at to enjoy. Last but by no means least, Crater, 66% off, which is at $5.09. Four euro seventy-five and four pounds and seven pence. What I've played of Crater so far is promising, but I feel it was released a little bit too early. It was released in a very buggy state, which I absolutely hate happening. Fat Shark is one of my favorite developers, and they need to quit doing this. This is not the first time it's happened. Crater is a post-apocalyptic hack and slash, and the idea being that once your characters die, they're dead, and you've got to replace them with other characters. So that's an intriguing idea. It's got lots of loot. It's got this three-person party mechanic. It almost reminds me a little bit of an action version of Baldur's Gate set in a Fallout-style universe. It's really kind of odd. It does have a lot of active development going on with it, which is what I will say. There's a lot of content updates, a lot of bug fixes going on into it. For a reduced price, it may very well be worth a look. It's got a very interesting interesting style to it, and if you're into hack and slash and you like the idea of that in post-apocalyptic, you're not going to find an awful lot of games that really fill that niche, so Crater may potentially be worthwhile for you, just bear in mind that it is not entirely stable as of yet, though it is a hell of a lot better than it was on launch. Okay folks, that wraps up the sale box for today, thank you very much for watching, I'll be back hopefully at the same time tomorrow with yet more information on what is coming up in this wallet-destroying madness that we call the Steam Sale. I'll see you next time.